how a new debt justice law could help tackle the global debt crisis. My name is Tess and I'm a policy officer at Debt Justice. In this video, I'll explain how big banks and hedge funds are derailing debt negotiations for countries in crisis and what this means for people living in countries like Ghana. I'll also explain how a new law could help fix the problem and why, as campaigners in the UK, we are in a unique position to make it happen. The problem. Right now, we're facing the biggest global debt crisis in over 24 years. 54 countries are in debt crisis and they're being held ransom by greedy private lenders. These financial giants are making millions in interest payments, while lower income countries are left without the money to pay for essentials, such as healthcare, education, and even tackling the climate crisis. The current economic crisis and high interest rates have seen debts owed by some of the poorest countries mount up to unsustainable levels. But instead of agreeing to cancel some of the debt, big banks and hedge funds are demanding it all plus interest. This is a serious problem, not least because these private lenders are the largest lenders to lower income countries. Almost 50% of lower income country debt payments are to these lenders. The rest is owed to other countries and international lenders like the World Bank and IMF. In 2020, as the pandemic worsened an already existing debt crisis, the G20 group of powerful countries, which the UK is part of, created a new scheme called the Common Framework to cancel some debts for lower income countries in debt crisis. Yet, of the four countries which have applied, Chad, Ethiopia, Ghana and Zambia, none have had any debt cancelled. The process is failing, in part because private lenders like big banks and hedge funds have so far refused to cancel any debts, delaying the debt relief process and discouraging other countries from applying for debt relief. For countries like Ghana, the situation is becoming impossible. Ghana is in debt crisis. In December 2022, it stopped making payments to most of its foreign lenders and is now trying to reach an agreement with them to cancel enough debt to make it sustainable. Earlier this year, Ghana reached an agreement with government lenders, although this has yet to be implemented. Meanwhile, private creditors are still refusing to play ball, meaning no deal can be finalised. Instead of providing the debt cancellation Ghana desperately needs, these greedy financial giants are holding out in the hope of future massive payments, and the people of Ghana are suffering. Here's what Bernard Anaba, a debt campaigner and ally in Ghana, told us recently about how the crisis is affecting people's day-to-day -day lives. The debt crisis has led to high cost of living, escalating food prices, high cost of uh, transportation that's poor, high cost of water, electricity, and making life very difficult for people. Uh, people barely go to two meals a day without compromising on their nutrition. So it's really a very difficult situation now. Lives are being destroyed because of the debt crisis. Ghana's debt crisis has led to high inflation, increasing the cost of living and pushing up prices for basic essentials such as water, electricity, healthcare and food. Back to Bernard. The government budget becomes constrained if it has to pay its debt. Usually government prioritises debt, paying out its debt before what is allocated to various uh, sectors or problems in the country. So day, it means that it reduces the impact of whatever the government has to solve this problem. So year after year, these problems compound and that increasingly is getting the people poorer and poorer. The debt crisis has diverted vital resources that could be spent on healthcare, education or addressing the climate crisis out of the country. In 2022, Ghana spent three times more on external debt payments than it did on healthcare. And since 2010, Ghana has paid over $7 billion in interest alone on debts to Western lenders. Cancelling the debt would improve the lives of millions of people. When they do get cancelled, what it means is that government's budget 
allocations to various basic services would have increased, which means that water delivery to homes uh, would increase. Many people depend on uh, government subsidized electricity. The government will be able to provide such services. Uh, government services in terms of providing uh, input to agriculture for people to produce would have increased. And generally, there will be more money uh, flowing from the government to the last person in the community. Uh, so that would have improved life much better than the situation now. Across Ghana, people have taken to the streets in protest at the rising cost of living caused by the debt crisis. As campaigners in the UK, it's important that we stand in solidarity with protesters and campaigners like Bernard. As we head towards a likely election in 2024, we've got a big opportunity to demand a new debt justice law that would help support these efforts and win justice for millions of people in countries like Ghana. So, what's the role of the UK in all of this? The UK plays a key role in enforcing debt contracts. Incredibly, 90% of debts owed by lower income countries to banks, hedge funds and oil traders are overseen by UK law. Heading towards a general election means that politicians will be keen to hear from us on the issues that matter most. It's a rare opportunity for us to demand a new debt justice law that would make lenders cancel the debt. And a new law is 100% possible. In 2010, Debt Justice won a Vulture Funds Law, which made private lenders with debts governed by UK law take part in debt cancellation. However, that debt cancellation scheme has now come to an end. That's why we need a new debt justice law to make private lenders take part in all internationally agreed debt relief today. The other place which governs debt contracts is New York. The New York Assembly is already considering bills that do the same thing as our proposals. And we're working closely with allies who are pushing for this legislation. And there's international pressure for the UK to act too. The heads of both big global financial institutions, the IMF and the World Bank, have called on the UK and New York to pass legislation to make it easier for countries to get private lenders to give debt relief. Like Bernard explains, what we have known in the past, if lenders are not forced, they won't support debt relief. So definitely lenders must be forced to cancel some of their debt, and that can be done through legislation. Lenders basically put profit before people. So if there's nothing such as a legislation to force them to come around the table, they won't ordinarily do that on their own. So, but if they do that, that will be very helpful to a country like Ghana. Particularly because if you look at the debt Ghana owes, majority of it is to the big banks and the hedge funds. But how will the law work? Here's the nerdy part. The UK Parliament could pass a law to force private creditors to take part in debt relief. The law could do two things. First is to make sure no private creditor can sue a country for more than government creditors are getting following a debt relief deal. This means that if a government cancels some of a country's debt, the extra money won't automatically all go to paying off private creditors like banks and can instead be spent on key services like healthcare. Another version of the law would allow the courts to force private lenders to take part in debt cancellation if other lenders, like governments, have agreed to it. Don't worry if this sounds complicated. The exact way the law works would be up to MPs, and we have a full briefing you can send to them. However the government decides to implement it, the key benefits of the new law would be the same. The law would stop stubborn creditors refusing to restructure or cancel debt, and address the toxic imbalance of power between the country in debt crisis and the often large number of powerful banks and hedge funds. Making the process of debt restructuring and cancellation easier would also speed up the process. 
freeing up cash for low-income countries to spend on healthcare, education, and tackling the climate crisis. Hopefully, this video has made clear why a new debt justice law is needed and the impact it would have on countries in debt crisis. As always, if you have any questions, send them to us by emailing info at debtjustice.org.uk and we'll be happy to answer them. I can't wait to stand with you as we campaign for a new law together.